I think that my conclusion after the last uh, 24 hours is that you can't fight religion in Ghana and win. Why do you say that? Because when matters of religion um, do occur, embroiled in controversy, at uh, the time that you're able to, because of the job we do, as the media um, discuss the issues and then get a lot of introspection done, the sentimental issues of religion are whipped up. That makes you look like um, you're, you're, you're the one who is the demon. Mm -hmm. And I think that all matters of key questions are then thrown to the dogs. One thing I'm very clear of is that the Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice, per the petition that has been put before it by the member of uh, uh, North Tong, Samuel Okuje to Ablakwa, is going to look at those issues. But at the end of the day, that's where it ends. And for um, revered people in our society who should reflect the morals and the teachings of the Bible, Whipping up sentiment in church also means that, Charlie, we have a long way to go. Hmm. Look, this is just coming on the back of over the week or before the close of the week. A main trustee, he's not just a common trustee, he's a main trustee on the board of the National Cathedral who resigns and then itemizes personal instances for which he had made interventions, hadn't gotten the questions that he wanted answered, for which, for somebody like him, who is well respected, very much educated and experienced, he has a, a very blunt response from the project's supervisors, okay. gives you the conclusion that it's a fight that no one can win. Hmm. It's a fight that no one can win. It's a very uh, unfortunate situation, but that's what it is. And to say that when you are going up or you are wherever you are, you have to fight demons. It then begs the question, if there are serious national governance issues and we have people who also play key parts in religion, who play key roles and the role that they play are asked off by way of the questions and the responses don't come, is the religion or the worship that they undertake is the best response that they have to give. And you know how we, we, when we go to church, we, we start with worship. Mm, then we start, then we put in the praises and worship and everybody's church. That's when we collect most of the collections. So I understand how it is. I think that that's the conclusion of the matter as far as I'm related. Anyway. Maybe we should move on to other things this morning. I think we should. We should. Well, the last time you were so charged, and as one of the demons, I advise you. I know, right? She's the reason that the man said he's fighting demons. Yes, I'm sure he watched that. Her, 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 her father, I will gave fight her, you in church. Her, her father <laughs> even gave her, gave her a message to be cautious. But it's not just religion but that, that we can't didn't even speak. In, in this, that day, I didn't even yeah. speak against whatever demonic, whatever he's no, talking No, no, no. It's not about, about oh, demonic. The question yes, I the asked, no, the question I asked that day, I remember very well, was that, was this a ploy to get a representation of the whole Christian domain Ghana to buy into the idea of the National Cathedral? Because if you take a look at the, the, the list of the members of the Board of Trustees, it was a representation across board, Orthodox, Charismatic, charismatic Pentecostal, and all that. That's the only question I asked. I didn't go at anyone. I asked a legislative question yeah. that every single unfortunately the response was not only to you it was exactly. to the many it was to, demons it was like to all of us yeah that's the only question i, I asked that things. day that was this a ploy by government to get a buy-in of the entire christendom of ghana that's all that's the question <laughs> i asked and that's how i was saying that for me it's not even just about religion that we can't seem to fight corruption yeah. at high places is something that we're battling with mm. at the moment as mm. well and the fact that we're mismanaging fun, funds mm. and we mm. have children who are in school mm. who do not have chairs to sit on mm. they don't have books textbooks questionable all these things are happening and yet money comes in to fight a pandemic mm. and we literally squander a greater number of it on things that we cannot even trace mm. And if it didn't take the Auditor General to come, I remember when the Finance Minister spoke. This was mm. on, par on the floor of Parliament. This was in March last year. And he gave details as to how much we were able to mobilize, 
-hmm. how much we had spent, and there were questions about some extra um, 5 million or so Ghana CDs that had not been accounted for. And he was very <coughs> persistent in saying that we have given you the details of how much money we've gotten mm. and how prudently we have spent mm. the money. Mm. And so if anybody comes out and says that mm. we wasted the money, I don't think that person has any ground mm. or any basis for the statement. Mm. Now, almost a year after, the Auditor General comes out and details how we made payments mm. to various sectors of the economy trying to fight COVID. Mm. And there are some that we cannot fight, uh, we cannot fund. <laughs> Uh, there are some that we cannot even account for to the extent that there are excuses that are being given that at that point we needed to make instant decisions. And so that is how come we release this amount of money to this person or that person. And so that's why we could not really go through, um, you know, the system and ensure that everything is. I mean, I, I thought that was a big problem. And maybe we should take a look at some of them. So yesterday. And, 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 and these are key points from the Auditor they are, General's report. They are. From the, the latest we are from the last exactly. year. Exactly. Okay. So first one says that Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development has paid over 200 and 85 million Ghana cities on non I think we should start from how much we mobilize activities so hold on a second the no, first we'll, slide okay the first slide is how much we mobilize so let's take it from from there okay. the very first one okay. so that we can get into the breakdown of what has gone okay. into what and okay. all that so um, so okay, right after so the key points exactly this one 21.8 yeah. billion Ghana cities mobilized to mitigate impact of COVID-19 remember yeah. that we received some amount of money from World Bank IMF EU, we even borrowed some 10 billion yeah, African, 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 African Development Bank. Even from our own yes, we, office we, as well. We, yeah. we also we had bonds flow. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And so in total, it was 21.8 billion Ghana cities that was mobilized. Ghana paid for 81.8 million worth of COVID-19 vaccines that have not been delivered. And maybe as we're taking a look at this, we should read it so that people can understand exactly, um, you know, how come we have this amount of money that's out outstanding and we still cannot trace it? I mean, for me, when I, I, I read it, I was heartbroken yesterday. And it says here um, that, so according to the Attorney General, government paid over 120 Auditor million. General. Auditor General. Sorry, Auditor pardon General. me. I always say Attorney General when I see AG. <laughs> yeah. According to the Auditor General, government paid over $120 million to the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, and African Vaccine Acquisition Trust, but only $38 million worth was delivered and so they've recommended that the chief director of the health ministry renegotiate and recover the outstanding balance for this particular amount that was paid i mean if you look at this and you look at the excuses that are being given you you, you ask yourself questions you know and, and that's not all. maybe we should go back to to the rest um of the slide and read the rest of it and then we can come back to this and yesterday there was a health worker frontline health worker that texted me and he said he was heartbroken. I remember that during the COVID-19 pandemic, he caught COVID twice, almost lost his life, <clears> did <throat> not receive the insurance that was promised frontline health mm. workers. Up till date, he's fighting for it. He said one of his colleagues died when his wife was eight months pregnant. No A compensation died. up until this point. And then he sees this report. Yeah, and asking that they paid questions. themselves a certain amount of you money. Know, let me, can senior I, management, okay, go ahead. So let me go just ahead, continue so ahead. that you can find a lot more of the, of the uh, explain us to the pointers that we have. Next one says over five million worth of medical supplies sent to Noguchi Memorial Institute remain unused till now. Now, 607,000 um, US dollars worth of ambulances yet to be delivered. And we're told that it was supposed to be for 25 ambulances that have not um, been, been de delivered yet. Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development pays over. 285 million on non COVID related activities. Now, senior management and other support staff of the Ministry of Information paid themselves 151,000. Ghana cities. Ministry of as, what? Yes, minis <laughs> Ministry of Information. <laughs> senior staff. Yes, <laughs> and senior staff. Now, paid themselves 151,000. Ghana cities as COVID risk allowance without approval from the chief of staff. Now, three treatment, isolation, and holding centers have been completed at a total cost of 29 million Ghana cities, but they are yet to be put to use. Um, it goes on and on and on. And there's a part about 37.6 million Ghana cities that cannot be validated, which was supposed to be for free water. Mm -hmm. I, Bella, help me here. Hmm. I, I don't understand. I, 
I, I, I think that um, if you take a look at the first time we were reported the first case, and I remember it was uh, in the wee hours of the night, on the 12th of March 2020. Yes. We had a hurriedly put together press conference in the presence uh, of the Minister of Health and uh, sandwiched or also just on the side, the Minister of Information and many other prominent people that we had that um, got all of us very much aware that Ghana now has gotten to the peak where we have the case. Remember, um, by October 2019, China had started reporting cases. The Chinese government from September to October had been in denial that there was a certain virus that was spreading so fast. They didn't uh, put, uh, do the lockdowns and so the virus just uh, spread to many other territories or countries. And since the 12th of March up to last year, June, we were in a position as a country to mobilize the total of 21.8 billion. You know that from 2021, the question started arising, being asked of the finance minister, Ken Oferiata. And again, he's at the center of all this. Mm -hmm. Let's not um, perhaps try to massage the, 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 the issues as far as this is related, to come and do the accountabilities for how the expenditures were meant or were undertaken. Because the expenditures were in, if not two, three folds. If you look at it, after March, we decided to go to Parliament, April, to go and suspend what we call the Fiscal Responsibility mm -hmm. Act. It was an act of Parliament that enabled the government of Ghana to keep its expenditure under 5% of its total expenditure for a certain budgetary year. Yeah. So if it was 10 Ghana cities, I needed not to exceed my expenditure beyond 5% of 10 Ghana cities. We allowed the finance minister with the backing of parliament to suspend the Fiscal Responsibility Act. That enabled us to open the floodgate for these expenditures. We were told that, we were told that, we were told that first, the COVID situation was so dire so we needed to support first businesses. And you remember the NBSSI now uh, metamorphosed into the new organization, Ghana, giving, uh, out agency, okay. yeah. giving out monies to businesses that needed them. We also spent on food to so-called mm -hmm. needy people. Mm -hmm. We bought mm -hmm. what we call the people. We meals, eh? we, we bought and it was we, for a day or two. Yeah. It was we, just one day. No, no, no. Oh, the period. Was, so the lockdown period. period. So, 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 so we bought what yeah. we call the PPEs. And the PPEs were for hospital staff, as well as allied staff within the health sector. We decided also to designate who was going to be frontline health worker. Hmm. And by the time that we finished, we also had spent on other expenditures of purchasing vaccines to the point now we're being told that over 81 million was paid to UNICEF and the deliveries were not done. Noguchi apparently has in excess of $5 million worth of a f facilities or Unused. equipment or stuff mm -hmm. that Unused. they have not used. Mm -hmm. So the question then beggars belief, if the, the issues were acts of the finance minister, come and then explain to us how the COVID expenditures went. If he had done that, we wouldn't be here today. Because in auditing, when you do auditing, when the auditor comes to you, the auditor is a very nice person. He comes to laugh with you, he takes his report, then you have what they call the audit conferencing. You come and sit before the auditor and they ask, this is what we found out. And many of us have been in private organization, corporate organization, in which we've been audited, and they ask us key questions. So when they ask the questions of the people or the ministers or the entities or the chief directors responsible, how come after all this while they fail to provide the corresponding answers or questions and then the answers that the Auditor General was asking for. Hmm. Does it mean that we have no paper trails, there was no proper documentation, there was spending that we cannot account for? Mm -hmm. Because an audit inquiry asks you, the auditee, key questions. Where the funding went to, how come you can or can't account for them? Because the issues about free electricity, free water, 
we came back after to pay to ask Ghanaians to pay in taxes. We're Indeed, when you buy petrol or you go and buy any item, you find you a COVID yeah. tax there that you are still paying. COVID levy. We are paying. So if somebody who is not educated, and I'm not talking in the sense that the person is not formally educated, but doesn't have the nuances of getting to know what the type of education he needs to do, the interpretation of this figure says that you misuse the COVID funds. Is that person wrong or right? The person is absolutely And this is where right. we are. Look, you know one time health minister, mm. he, was at, he was in a position where they went to do some negotiation and some purchase of COVID vaccines. Vaccine? And, and he, he said he wasn't thinking straight look, at that time. I think as a platform, we have to do a recall of the health minister and have his video played. Mr. Minister, you are a senior member of this house and you are aware of how we deal with emergency situations in Parliament. We have conventions and rules and regulations I mean, governing how you deal with emergency issues, i.e. appearing before the relevant committee and make a case so that the issue can be dealt with as an emergency issue. Why didn't you take advantage of that procedure? What I'm sure I've explained that those were not normal times. And I was seriously in the situation that couldn't make me think properly. The way you think that now, I will actually address myself to the situation. That those were not normal times. And I was seriously in the situation that couldn't make me think properly. The way you think that now, I will actually address myself to the situation. That those were not normal times. And I was seriously in the situation that couldn't make me think properly. The way you think that now, I will actually address myself to the situation. Now we'll think properly for the health minister. <clears throat> and this has been put in the Auditor General's report. And the Auditor General's report is not it's, it's no mean or not a mean report. Now, Bella, what do you make of this? Let, quick one. Let me Thank just you. read what the finance minister said on the floor of parliament after he had given us a breakdown of how much we had mobilized and how much we had spent. And he said, and I quote, Mr. Speaker, I believe that this presentation demonstrates government's commitment to accountability and transparency. All programmed, mobilized, and utilized funds have been reported on. As a government, we continue to operate an open door policy and welcome any opportunity to engage in national interest. Okay. And he said that they gave those details okay. transparently. Meanwhile, today. now meanwhile, the Auditor General's report also stated that over 2.5 billion US dollars, which is equivalent to 21 billion Ghana cities where the money is mobilized for the fight against COVID-19. And the report says that only 25% hmm. of the amount, which is 5.5 million, was used on health. The question I'm asking this morning, the monies we are asking for from the IMF is worth 3 billion US dollars. And we were able to mobilize 2.5 billion US dollars, just short of 500,000 billion, um, 500,000 of what we are seeking for from the IMF. So if COVID-19 alone, we could do this, and that amount of money was sitting in this country, where are we where we are? Now, if only... 5.5 million of the amount, 25%, was used on COVID-19 proper. And the rest went into um, things like SHS mm. and all that. Then I come back to the same question that you were asking. Budget allocations were made for free SHS and all the other things, for LEAP and all the other things that the monies were spent, the monies were spent on. Budgets was made, money was allocated for it. So where did the rest of the money go? Why are we at the IMF right now and we are even bragging about staff level agreements that we reached in, a short, in the shortest span of time and now we are still sitting and we are suffering and now we would have to touch the savings of individual innocent Ghanaians who bought bonds with their savings. Where are we where we are? And 
You know, the questions that had come up ah. over the last two years is that, look, nobody said COVID did not affect any other country. Indeed, it did. It affected the sub-region. The growth rates were down. But we had enough money in this country. And then the issue was how prudently did we undertake those sort of expenditures? Because... We have been in a position where we had enough money to be able to allocate to <laughs> sectors that could mitigate against COVID. We spent monies and now the chickens have come home to roost. So how did we spend those monies? Is it through some fraudulent or non-fraudulent procurement practices? Hmm. Did we give the monies to cronies who could not account for them or take the objectives for which those monies were given for? The ones that we give to businesses, have they paid back? Let me read certain um, statements okay, in there okay. so that you, we get you an answer, an answer to the question that you're asking. So point 62 says, failure to withhold tax on payment mm -hmm. to smart infraco. So it says that section 116 of the Income Tax Act 2015 states that a resident person other than an individual, individual shall with, withhold tax on the gross amount of the payments at the rate specified in the first schedule when the person makes a payment to another resident. Now when you move on to 63, it says that we noted that on 6 May 2020, management of the Ministry of Finance paid Smart Infraco Limited 23.388 million Ghana cities for the provision of smart workspace platforms for MDAs to facilitate virtual workspace. However, we noted that there was no deduction of withholding tax of 1.754 million Ghana cities on the payment to Smart Infraco Limited. The Ministry of Finance explained that the amount was part payment to Smart Infraco Limited and therefore the total tax on the contract sum would be deducted from subsequent payments to Smart Infraco Limited. Failure on the part of ministry to withhold the amount of 1.75 from the payment to Smart Infraco denied the state timely inflow of revenue into the consolidated fund, as well as the opportunity for GRA to assess the status of compliance of Smart Infraco Limited. That's 1.754 back in what? May 2020. Is it the same amount in January 2020? How can it be? It can it never be. Because the city has depreciated. And so if they give this excuse, I'm wondering, did somebody think that the, the value of the money was going to remain the same. Now let's move on and read um, other places as well. So procurement of the Janssen vaccines as well, that's 73. Um, let's move on to that. And that was what I read earlier, that we had paid some 81 million US dollars to procure Janssen vaccines. And unfortunately, at the time when we received it, we only got, um, where is it? Okay, so it says that uh, we noted that the Ministry of Health on behalf of government of Ghana paid an amount of 120 million Ghana cities to UNICEF for the supply of vaccines. However, 5 million doses of the vaccines valued at 38 million were supplied to the national cold room, resulting in an outstanding amount of yeah. 81 million Ghana cities. Now, when they were asked about it, uh, let me jump to that spot. Okay, well, so it says that this could result in financial <coughs> loss. The chief director of the Ministry of Health explained that the amount was paid in... So of the Auditor General's yeah. reports. Well, I was just reading um, point 78. This was a follow-up on that... 81 million Ghana cities that, uh, worth of vaccines that still has not been received by the country. So 78 says that the chief director of the Ministry of Health explained that the amount was paid in anticipation of receiving all the vaccines within a short space of time um, for vaccination in the country. However, unexpected... Okay, you know what, let me just move on to 107, 107 yeah. because of time. And 107... Um, sorry, but I'll just read from yeah, my yeah. laptop. That's why I'm trying to. You let me read from here. So this is about frontline health workers. And yesterday I was having a conversation with one of them. He was heartbroken when he read the reports. Now it says that general principles of life insurance requires that when an employer organization purchases group life insurance policy to cover employees in case of death, accident, temporary permanent disability, and critical illness, the employer organization may keep the master agreement, but the identified employees should receive certificates of coverage, which could be used by the beneficiary or next of kin to apply for claims when the need arises. Let's move on um, to the next slide, if we can. This is why I wanted to read. Okay, so it says here... Um, Additionally, the National Insurance Commission guidelines on life insurance. Okay, we observe that the ministry, this is 109, we observe that the ministry paid 10 million Ghana cities, 10.309 million as premium 
for special life insurance cover for 10,000 health workers and allied health professionals working on the COVID-19 pandemic without any life insurance policy document detailing the beneficiaries, their location, next of kin in case of death, nature of the benefits, and the term of the coverage. And they gave details. Now, the chief director explained that ensuring health workers under the pandemic was novel to the ministry and even the insurance industry in Ghana. So they did not know which health workers to list and the ones to leave out. They therefore paid the premium for a blanket coverage of 10,000 health workers. And so these health workers who have not signed any insurance policy documents will find it difficult to access any benefits under this blanket premium payment arrangement. In the event of defaults by the insurance companies in payments of benefits, the employees will not have the legal capacity to seek legal redress in court. <laughs> this is the situation. <laughs> and like I said, we've interviewed this man, I think twice on this platform. He almost died. He did not receive any insurance package. He paid for his own treatment, which is what he said. Meanwhile, there had been a communication that if you're a frontline health worker and you fall sick, it will be sorted out yeah. by government. Yeah. Now, uh, there was a, a default in the way health workers who were treating COVID were initially classified. Right. The first time, you know, they had special, um, what did they call it? Uh, those wards that... Uh, that they were isolation was isolation okay. yeah. so okay. um the the medical officers as well as the paramedical professionals who were supposed to look at those isolation centers and suppose they were the initial people who were classified as frontline health yes. workers yes but over time by a month or two into COVID, by june july august 2020 the ministry of health ideally should have classified everyone from the watchman or the security man from the gate as a frontline health worker mm -hmm. because all of them yeah. received the emergencies yeah. and i know this because i'm very close to um personnel uh, at the tema general hospital mm -hmm. many of them especially at adult emergency who ideally were not supposed to be treating covid, COVID. patients would have patients with complications that look like just normal illnesses. But by the time the testing was done, and many health professionals across the country will corroborate what I'm saying, mm -hmm. the patient will sit in the emergency ward uh, from the OPD about four to six days. And you remember it took a lot of time for, for the uh, the testing centers to get the results out. Yes. By the time the patient sits four to six days at the ward on admission, that patient had spread the COVID or the mm -hmm. virus mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. many other patients who necessarily may not have been infected with COVID. Mm. So by the time the results came and the patients were diagnosed to have had COVID, then it will mean that they needed to be sent to the isolation ward. But then those at adult emergency or the emergency centers or the wards that receive them were not classified to be frontline health workers for COVID. Yeah. Now, even the, the modelies and all that, the oddlies, who would um, take the patients out of vehicles. And we know Ghana, we don't transfer through ambulances, mm. taxis and yeah. etc. Yeah. So by the time they take them to the wards, all those health professionals were also not classified as as, as frontline health workers, the security man at the gate of, let's say, Tema General Hospital was not, not classified as, as, as a frontline health worker. But they helped in, in either um, removing that patient from that taxi or the car and then taking that patient to the ward, which ideally was not an isolation center exactly. because the results delayed. So we had many health workers who got infected. They were not entitled to some of these allowances even though they got infected, yeah. but in the books of the Ghana Health Service or within the Ministry of Health, they were not classified as frontline health workers, yes. but they encountered hmm. COVID patients. But this person I'm talking about is a proper was frontline at worker. He was one of the people who was testing, conducting the mm. test. Mm. Now, he and caught, he caught it, it twice, twice yeah. almost died. I remember we showed videos and pictures on this platform when it was happening, and he says that till date, he can't walk very long distances because mm. he gets uh, tired easily. Now that's not the only one. He says, my colleague was also a frontline health worker, died while the wife was eight months pregnant. Till date, no compensation. My health has never been the same. And look at what they have used our monies for. Oh. This is someone who laid down his life. And you see, he's so bitter about it that 
he says he, he's not even sure if he wants to continue as a health worker in this country. It is that bad. Now, equipment that came in as well, there were some that were sent to some facilities that never received it. A COVID patients, was never an isolation center. And I'll read it to you. So let's move to 141. It says that we noted that medical equipment valued at 110,000 Ghana cities and 27,895 Ghana cities were issued to a private hospital by name Christ Leeds and specialist hospital belonging to a doctor in Medina, which did not serve as a COVID-19 isolation center, nor did it receive any, any COVID-19 patients. patients. Management could not offer any reason for the infraction. Can you imagine? They couldn't. So many queries were made by the various um, uh, Auditor General Department workers and the auditees just couldn't respond. Look, the thing is that auditing is a process. The auditing was not done in a day or in a week. They raise queries, they go into a conference with you, you're supposed to respond to those queries and then they put them in the report. And these are the outcomes. Clearly, no trails. And each year we lose a a lot of money, billions of Ghana cities. Since 2017, we've been losing monies within the structure of the various MMDAs or MDAs. Mm -hmm. And at a point, we had to the tune of 12 billion Ghana cities. Now, from 2020, this COVID sort of expenditures then exposes how prudent we were yeah. in managing the funds that we got. At least now we can draw the conclusion. Hmm. Ghana from March... 2020 to June 2022 had enough money if they were well managed and disbursed and accounted for properly. We won't be here. To be but that's what I said in the beginning. The same amount we are asking for from the IMF was almost the same amount we mobilized for COVID-19. We had more it. Done, more done. We had it in this more country. Done, done. We had it, but today we are the IMF. This more is done, us. More done. Chale. Listen, we were even supposed to build an isolation center in Nalerigu. Okay, at the time. Now, it was supposed to cost 15 million. We paid an advance of 4.5 million Ghana cities. That was 30% of the amount to the, um, the contractor. We're told that the contractor did just about 10% of the work and abandoned the Abandoned, project. yeah. Till date. Yeah. They've not been able to retrieve yeah. the money from him. Yeah. Till date. 4.5 million gone. And so imagine if the pandemic hit the Nal Nalirigu, um, you know, area. area, seriously. We had money that we could have put an isolation center up. We didn't do it. That's we 